So Houdini 19 has been released. And as always, it's quite a handful to find out which of those features we wanna focus on. And with this release, I have the feeling that side effects focused on providing high level tools that are a bit pipeline centered, more focused on the big studio, while at the same time providing some maintenance and further development of some features that were already pre-existing in previous Houdini versions. So instead of focusing on the big guns like kin effects or grooming, I wanna pick out a few small tidbits that caught my eye here and there in Houdini 19, which I think are a great addition to the software and are actually quite useful for the freelancer or small studio workflow. I wanna build this with you, an abstracted sculpture of these two hounds. And to get started in Houdini, I'll just drop down a file node in the OBJ level, dive in there and point it to the provided the geo file that we ship with, the Townley Greyhounds Remeshed, which is a 3D scan from 3dscans.com that I just remeshed. So it has this uniformly triangular mesh here with around 120,000 polygons. To build that basic sculpture, we'll scatter some points onto the surface, make it 100 points maybe for now, and then use the Voronoi Fracture to break up this statue into individual pieces. Takes a while to calculate. And then we have this. When you zoom in, you might be able to see some additional cuts, maybe here and there. So our statue has been cut up into those individual pieces. For what we want to build, uh, we're only interested on the outside of this. And luckily, Bornoi Fracture gives us an inside and an outside group. So what we can do down here is add a blast or a delete node, blasting slash deleting the inside group leaving us only with the outside here. Next, I wanna remesh each of those pieces so they have a bit more fine uniform mesh while keeping those edges here, which can be done just using a remesh node, which I wanna set to be not as coarse as this. Let's set a target size of 0.005. Takes a bit of time to remesh this. And I also wanna increase the iterations to four to make this a bit smoother even. So that leaves us with this mesh here. So now to build this cloth or bubble surfaces spanning in between the edges of those individual cells, I first want to mark those edges as the boundary so that they don't get moved or don't get influenced by what we are trying to pull off now. So I'm gonna use a group node, wire this into my remesh, set it to create a point group, which is called boundary. Then uncheck base group and scroll down here to include by edges, which I'll enable. And then if I scroll down further, I'll check unshared edges. So that leaves me now with only those edge points selected here. Now the surfaces that I wanna create are called minimal surfaces. And we created them already in a previous tutorial using vellum. However, with Houdini 19, there's a new node in town, which allows the calculation of those surfaces in one go and is really quick and really handy. It is called the attribute fill node. Wiring it in after the group node here and looking at its properties, we can see that its default mode is set to interpolate. And it says also here Poisson, which is the name of a French mathematician who discovered and worked on the equation that bears his name, Poisson equation. What Poisson's equation does is if we, for example, use it to calculate the positions of each of those points on our mesh in here, is it says that for each individual mesh point here, its position should be as similar as possible to the adjacent points around it. So basically it says, make this surface as smooth as possible while still respecting the boundaries of each surface which in turn results in what we know as a minimal surface. So let's set this up. So we wanna work on the position attribute, P, and we want to have our boundary group as our boundary. And after a bit of calculation, we can see this, which already looks quite similar to a minimal surface, minus these normal errors that we still have in there. And to correct for them, let's just attach another normal node like this and set its cusp angle to 22. So now when zooming out, we have the basis of our sculpture here. Now to add these wires in between those minimal surfaces, give the appearances of wires holding up the sculpture and holding up these pieces of cloth or pieces of bubbles. We will go to the remesh node again, copy our group node here and paste it and move it over here. And instead of grouping points in here by the unshared edges, we'll set this to group the edges actually. And then use a really, really handy set effects labs node called labs edge group to curve. And what that one does when I highlight it and set its group to work on the boundary is it converts these boundary edges into lines. One remark, I've got the feeling that side effects as lab tools have become increasingly important for my daily workflow and even more so with Houdini 19. So I would highly recommend just installing them by default together with Houdini. So you have them there always available and ready to go when you need them. So let's just switch to point display and we can see that these lines are a bit irregular. So let's fix them, clean them up a bit using first the clean node set to consolidate points, fix overlap, but uncheck delete overlap pairs, and then the resample node to uniformly resample the resulting splines here, the resulting lines, and a length of 0.1 might be a bit too coarse as you can see here. So let's set those to 0.01. 
and before it wire in the poly path to join adjacent paths and clean up our geometry a bit further like so. So that leaves us with those lines here forming the wires of our sculpture. Let's save this and for rendering this later and correctly rendering those lines as wires, these need a width attribute. So let's use an attrib create, wire it in after the resample and create a width like this. And let's set it to 0 0.005 for now, maybe. Let's attach two nulls in here. Call one out underscore wire. Wire in the attrib create that we just set up. And then up here after the normal, let's drop down another null this one out underscore surface and the normal node goes into that one and this is the surface output of our sculpture so far let's highlight that here go up one level and create another geo node which we're going to call wire and also maybe let's call this one surface instead of file one before we want to throw this into a render engine let's add a camera by control clicking on the camera here making sure it's locked to the viewport so we can adjust it accordingly and maybe let's build a background grid the cyclo just using grid diving in there maybe I'm moving this down while switching our viewport to ghost the other object so we can see our sculpture in the background and i think if i move this down to minus 0 0.5 it should sit flush and then let's use a bend set to bend this by 90 degrees upwards and a transform to just turn it around 180 degrees along the y-axis and maybe move it back a bit we have this cyclo as a background slash ground plane and the only thing left for me to do is subdivide it a bit, maybe two steps, and disable the grid display. So we have this cyclo and background. Let's call this grid BG for background. And finally, set up an environment light by control clicking on the environment light button up here. And then in the end light, under the light tab, in the environment map, let's just point it to an HDR. In this case, making sure I unchecked show sequences as one entry. And then I select my artist workshop HDR, which I downloaded from Poly Haven, resulting in this. Before I finally set this up to render, let's just assign a few materials. And if you don't have these networks up here open already, just pin this network here using this icon here and hit Control T a few times to open up new tabs here and set just one to the materials network here. In here, I'm going to use the new material X standard surface as this is the new material standard that not only Houdini, but also Unreal are going to support. And this is the shader that's not only working in comma CPU, but also on the comma XPU alpha. And we'll get into that in a minute. So let's copy that and paste it two more times and call one shader surface, call one shader wire, and let's call the third one BG for background. Let's assign those by maybe switching the viewport to smooth wire shaded and dragging the BG onto the background. The wire we'll take care of in a second. Let's drag the surface onto the surface here. And as the wire is kind of hard to hit here, because it's very thin, let's just under the OBJ context on the wire geometry and the render tab. Let's select the material manually and point it to the wire shader like so. Okay, fingers crossed. I think we're ready for rendering. And I want to render this using Karma. And typically it would set up lights, shaders and camera for Karma in Solaris, in the LOPS or in the stage context. However, if you're lazy and maybe a bit slow like me, you like staying in your old OBJ context and just use your standard out context to render stuff like you did with Mantra, Redshift, Octane, 3 Delight, or any of the other third-party render engines. And luckily in Houdini 19, SideFX finally provides a tool for that called the Karma Rob. Before we have a look at it, here's a disclaimer. In my few tests so far, it didn't perform as reliably. So sometimes material updates were not propagated. Sometimes geometry updates were not propagated. We'll have a look at the node and I think it holds a big promise for the future. However, as a first release, it still feels somewhat experimental. So I'm going to cover a second workflow of how to render using Karma and H19 as well. However, let's just have a look at the Karma ROP here and for dialing in my materials, what I want to do is hit comma viewport and this new window will pop open, providing me with a comma viewport here and the settings here. So to enable the rendering, let's go here to perspective and set it to karma. And immediately it starts rendering. The time to the first pixel is really quick. However, convergence is still somewhat slow, especially given the fact that we are only shooting nine samples per pixel and not maybe 200 or 500 or 1000 as you would in production. If we increase the sample count here, you can see that now our render times increase quite drastically, even for such a simple image. And what we can do is try out a new alpha version of Karma XPU. That means Karma that not only runs on the CPU, but also on your GPUs. It is called alpha for a reason. It's far from feature complete. It's a bit unstable here and there. It does some unexpected things sometimes. 
but it's really fast, as you can see. And in this case, also consistent as we are using Material X shaders. I ran into major issues with Karma XPU with the Alpha when trying to use it with the classic shader. Principal shader worked fine mostly, but Material X's standard materials seem to be the way to go. So let's try adjusting those materials and see if the material changes propagate through my viewport here, which they not always did. So let's go to the matnet here. And for the surface here, maybe let's add some transmission by setting the transmission to one here. And yes, indeed, I can see that seemed to have worked. One thing I'm clearly missing, and I didn't just care setting up yet, I just plainly forgot, is the wire. So let's take care of that. Just closed comma. Going back to OBJ and in the wire here, the only thing I have to do is use an OBJ merge to bring in the wire geometry we created by pointing it to the surface out wire here, going up one level. And now we can see we also have wire geometry here. So now let's go back to our out context. And on the comma, Rob hit comma viewport again. Again, setting it to comma, and after a while, watching it converge. And now you can see we are also getting those wires in here. So again, let's go back over to the material network here. Let me just move that over. And on the wire node here, maybe let's increase the metalness and set its base color to something more red-orangey, maybe like this, to give more of a copper or a brass appearance. Finally, let's just tweak the background a bit and maybe make it a bit brighter, setting it to be pure white. And as a last measure in our OBJ context on the environment light, maybe let's increase the light intensity to 1.5. One more thing I want to set up here in the comma settings is under the limits. I can dial in how many bounces I want for my diffuse. That means my indirect light, my reflections and my refractions. And I think they all could need a few more bounces. So I'm going to set the diffuse to four and the reflection and refraction limit to eight bounces respectively. One final thing that is needed down here on this glass where the glass touches our ground plane slash background. This gets quite dark, darker than you'd expect in reality. And that is because caustics aren't enabled by default. So let's go to geometry and shading here and check caustics. And after a brief initialization, we can see now we are rendering caustics as well. It takes a while to clear up, but with comma XPU, it at least is way faster than using purely CPU rendering. Okay, so far so good. This all works. You remember to stick to using Material X standard material for Karma XPU. However, as I mentioned, in some instances, the Karma ROP here could be a bit unstable or not update properly. And in this case, the only way I found to properly reset and reload the scene and restart rendering is just fully delete the Karma ROP and drop it again and then restart rendering on the Karma viewport. If that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, maybe this technique is more for you. So let's delete that Karma ROP here and switch over to our Solaris desktop and also make sure our scene view is set to stage. By default, the scene, the stage is empty because we didn't import anything yet. And traditionally in Houdini 18.5 or earlier, we would use sub import or sub create to populate our scene and then set up cameras, lights, and materials in here. However, for people like me and potentially you who like setting up lights and cameras and maybe also materials in the OBJ context, SideFX implemented a few nodes to make it easy to bring those setup scenes into the stage context, into LOPS and Solaris, namely the scene import nodes. In this case, I'm going to use the scene import all node to just import everything that I set up in my scene so far. And then I can immediately switch to the camera one, which I already defined and specified in my main scene. And you can see my image is already rendering and converging as my viewport is set to karma. So if I want to adjust the karma settings here, I could do so by attaching a karma node underneath my scene import and flagging it accordingly. And in this case, I want to set it to the XPU engine and increase the pixel samples to maybe 1024. Also, as previously, down here under the limits, I want to increase my limits to four and eight bounces respectively. And in the geometry and shading tab, I want to enable the caustics, resulting in the same image we just rendered on the karma ROP. So what if I want to set up my materials in here? Well, for one, what I could do is on the scene import all, I could disable the import of materials. So now I'm only getting this clay-ish rendering here. And then the technique is pretty similar to previous Houdini versions using a material library wired in after the scene import. And in here, I'll dive in and create again my material nodes, sticking to material X for this example, as it is the most stable material with Karma XPU so far. So I'm going to drop down the material X standard surface, copy and paste it two more times, call one surface, call one wire, and one BG for background, like so. Again, as previously, I'm going to drag and drop this so the surface goes onto 
this geometry here at the surface. And then Solaris asks me if I want to assign this material only to this piece here or this mesh here or onto the whole OBJ node that is the surface, which of course is what I want to do. So I'm going to select set as material on the whole surface component. I'm going to drag the wire to the wire geometry. It's just a bit hard to hit here. Okay, like this. And again, I want to set this as a material for the whole component. And finally, drag the BG material onto the background. And again, setting this as a material on the whole component. And now I can dial that in respectively. So maybe make the background I don't know, either brighter or maybe a good bit darker. So we get a bit of reflection in here, or maybe we want to have it orange to make it pop a bit more, whatever you like. I'm going to go for white now. Same goes for the wire. I'm just going to increase the metalness again and adjust the base color accordingly. So I'm going to end up with this copper or brass like material. And then again on the surface, I'm just going to increase the transmission to one, give it this glass appearance. And if we go back to the stage now, we can see not only did we add the material library in here where we created the materials, but also by dragging and dropping those materials into the viewport, Houdini automatically created this assign material node here, where we assigned those three materials to the individual components of our scene. I want to point out that neither did we create a camera in here nor an environment light. Those are being imported by the scene import all node here from our OBJ level. And I'm not sure as the future has to prove which of those workflows I'm going to stick to, but I have the feeling that this one here that I've shown you will be the one that I'll be using mostly when rendering in Karma or Karma XPU. Again, keep in mind, Karma XPU is alpha. And if side effects themselves decide to declare something as an alpha, you should take them serious. So um, Karma XPU is fast, but it's by no means feature complete. It might be unstable. So I recommend using it for experiments or private projects only. Apart from Karma, let me switch back to build. We mentioned a few new nodes, mainly the attribute fill, which can be used to solve partial differential equations, such as the Poisson equation, and thus being used not only to generate minimal surfaces, such as in our example here, but also interpolate between textures or images, which we'll briefly cover in another video. What I want to do next is add a bit more detail into those areas where this connecting wires are, but I think that's also a topic for another video. And if you like what we're doing and want to support us, or maybe learn more about Houdini using in-depth courses, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us on Patreon, thanks so much, folks. Without your help, Intagma in this form would just not be possible. With a very special thank you going out to important looking pirates, Rodeo Effects, Sean Edwards, Chris Hebert, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, folks. So, until next time, as always, it's cheers and goodbye.